Hi folks, my name's Adam and this is my 1990 Catalina 34 sailboat. In this video, I'm going to talk about adding power outlets to the boat. My sailboat has no 12 volt or DC outlets. So when I'm here, I have a shore power cord and I have AC outlets and I basically have a tiny house. But when I'm out and about, I have no way to charge phones or plug in a cooler or anything like that. So that is what I'm going to remedy. So this hopefully easy project will be adding three outlets. And what I've decided to go with is a DC panel which has a 15 amp breaker and then this one's a blank panel. So you can put whatever you want in it. Um, I'm using two car socket style 12 volt outlets and then the third one is a little bit fancier, which I'm kind of excited about. It is a combination USB slash aux input, and this is going to wire right into my Bose stereo over here. And I guess I should say at this point that one, I am not an electrician, and two, you should do any boat repairs, especially electrical ones, at your own risk. The first step for this project is going to be some demo. Uh, as you can see, I've already actually removed the radio here. That's going to have a hookup to this guy. And I've decided to install the panel just below where the radio goes. So that's going to be right down here. Um, this is going to keep everything fairly tidy. And it's also good because the power for these outlets is going to come from the main circuit panel over here. I've got a blank switch over here. I'm going to wire into that. This panel will come with a mounting template. So the mounting template shows the overall panel. That's the outside line. That's how big it's going to be. It has an inside line, which is what you actually want to cut out. And, and then it's got some marks for screw holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this piece out first. Then I'm going to tape the whole thing to the wall and then trace the inside to figure out what material I need to remove from my wall over here. Now that I've thought long and hard about what kind of outlets I want and where I want them to go, it is time to do the final alignment before we drill. And so after this point, there'll be no going back. You should always check the back side to make sure that you're not going to be drilling into anything important. I did that earlier, but I'm going to double check again right now. All clear. Actually working kind of just hellacious. All right, that hole is a little jankier than I was planning, but it works. Okay, so that was a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be, but now that I've got the hole, I can start connecting everything. So I think first I'm going to connect the USB 
to the stereo. This part was basically plug and play. This stereo, which I installed last year, came with a well-labeled wiring harness and clear diagrams, so I'm just following directions. The new aux port connected to left and right aux inputs, and the USB cable only had one place to go on the back of the stereo. Let's try out the USB and see if that outlet works. So I've got a watch here. It's USB chargeable. We'll plug it into this port and see if we get juice. And see no change. So let's try it again with the stereo turned on and oh my gosh it's charging! Woo! That is pretty cool. Alright, so it also tells me that I have to have the stereo turned on for the USB port to work, which I guess makes sense. Okay, now before we move on to the power outlets, let's do one more test of this USB slash aux outlet that I've got connected to the stereo. So I have music playing and it should be coming out of this cord. Um, so let's see if anything happens. Okay, nothing at first. So let's. I may have to change the source. So, source aux and. Oh my goodness! Okay, now that we have the holes drilled and the audio hooked up, it is time to do the power outlets. The panel I have came with a wiring harness for three outlets, but since we're only doing two, I will just modify that harness a little bit for two and then connect the whole thing to power and ground. Okay, so here's the panel. We have two outlets instead of three, um, but uh, here are the wires for the wiring harness that came with it, and we have a little diagram here. So basically we just need to make this three-way into a two-way do that with both of these, and then connect the power and ground. Hello. I realized as I was doing this that these extra wires aren't actually hurting anything, and if I ever decide to get rid of the audio and just put another outlet in here, it'll be handy just to have them. So. I'm going to leave them in there for now. And now we get to take the main electrical panel apart to get to our power source. So we're going to use this accessory breaker, uh, which this boat doesn't have a use for yet. Get this out of the way. And then start disassembling. Okay, so it's been a minute since the last step in this process because I realized that to finish the job I needed some electrical connectors that I didn't have. Uh, I'm going to need some spade connectors, that's what this one is, and a ring connector for the ground bus bar. So yeah, off to it! So just in case you were wondering, uh, the power is completely turned off in here right now because, you know, safety. Uh, but uh, we still need light, so all the lights in here are running off battery power right now. So that's what's going on. So now that the power is off, I am opening this panel up as far as it will go. All these wires don't really like to move around that much. In this montage, I'm preparing tinned duplex marine wire with heat shrink spade and ring connectors so that next I can connect the new outlets to the boat. This method is flexible and waterproof, so as long as I do it right, my outlets should last a long time. Well, now before we go any further, I actually need to reconnect the power so that I can heat shrink these connections.
So if we take a look at these connections, you can see that they are pretty much watertight now. So this is nice, good, clean work right here. Pretty happy with this. Okay, so now that the heat shrinking is done, we will unplug the heat gun, turn off the boat power again, and then continue our wiring. In this segment, I'm making final connections, running power from the accessory switch on my DC electrical panel to the outlets, and connecting the ground leads from the outlets to a grounding bus bar. At this point, I'm using a simple circuit test light to make sure I have a good circuit for my new outlets. You just touch ground to ground and power to power. The red light means the circuit is complete. I probably should have done this a lot earlier in my process, but this is when I thought of it. So now, I figured, well I've got all this apart, why don't I actually check this circuit and see what kind of power it'll get? And so the main use case for these outlets, I mean, I guess I'll use them all the time, but I really want to use these outlets when I'm underway. That means I want to be able to use them with just the battery. So right now the batteries are turned on. Um, the house battery is powering all the 12 volt stuff. And uh, so I'm going to check this circuit and see just make sure that it's giving me what I think it's going to give me. Oh, jeez. I've got my voltmeter right here. And I've got it set to 12 volt. And so I am going to just complete the circuit. And it looks like we're getting, we've got a good battery with 13 volts, 13.04. So now that I know that that circuit is good, I'm gonna double check my new wires to make sure that we have a good circuit. Looks like I may have smashed the spade connector a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can unbend it. I know. I will use one of these little spade connectors to pry it open. I'm not worried about it coming loose. So let's try that again. Alright. And this wiring is done. Well, all right then. If you enjoyed any of that, come back soon. We're going to be doing some more DIY and maybe go sailing.